Hello, Vibe Tribe, and welcome to Let's Vibe Podcast. I'm your host, Vibe with Aid. In today's episode, we're doing a little spring cleaning of your mental health. It's March, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining a little brighter, we're coming out of a very cold winter, and I thought what a great way to come out of this sadness of winter and enter a new season and talk about some things that have helped me improve my mental space. Like I said, we're doing a little spring cleaning of your mental health. I wanted to do an episode on this because I've been on a journey this past year in the pursuit of trying to become the best version of myself, and I've really taken my mental health as a priority. If you guys have been following me, you'll see I've taken breaks from social media, I've taken breaks from posting content just to really preserve my mental space and take care of it. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys as we are entering festival season soon. It really is a lot on the body to attend these music festivals. It's a lot on the mind and everything like that. So I really want to make sure I can try and help you guys as best as possible. And it helps to make sure you're actively working on this so that as you're going from festival to festival, you're able to manage and take care of yourself. So we'll cover what I found works for me as well as some helpful tips One thing I will know is that I am not a medical professional by any means. So I am speaking from personal experience. What works for me might not work for you. I am just trying to share some helpful tips and hopefully it can help you in some way. If you are experiencing more serious issues, don't be afraid to reach out for help from a professional. Just wanted to make that clear and I can also put some resources in the show notes of today's episode. As you're listening to today's episode, be sure to tag me on Instagram where you're listening to today. Share with a friend who could also use this episode. As always, if you guys have any questions, my DMs and inbox is always open. You can find me on Instagram at vibewithaid and my email for the podcast is letsvibepodcast at vibewithaid.com. But before we get into today's episode, let's do a little vibe check. If you're new to the podcast, I do a vibe check at the beginning of every episode where I check in with myself and with you guys and prompt y'all to check in with yourselves. I'm really happy you guys have been loving this segment. It's really great for me to put my mindset in check, but then I'm sure it's also been really helpful for you guys as well as just give you a little bit of an update of what's going on in my life. I feel like I've been doing a lot of sit down videos on my YouTube channel and my Instagram content is pretty curated. So it's kind of hard sometimes for me to check in. It's been really hard for me to talk on Instagram stories. Um, I just haven't felt all that motivated to. So the little vibe checks are really great for way for me to get more personal with you guys and kind of tell you what's been going on. And since this gets posted on Mondays, I want to try and check in with y'all and hopefully set your week on a good foot. So what we'll do is we will take three collective deep breaths and I'll ask some questions. So if we want to take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out. Another one in and another one back out. Last one, and we'll take a deep breath in and we'll hold it. One, two, three, and then back out. So, how am I feeling today? Do I like this feeling? What could make today better if need be? What could I affirm for myself? What am I grateful for today? So you can think about those questions and I'll go ahead and answer on my part. Um, Today, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Today, I leave for Arizona. It's February 28th when I'm recording this episode. The beginning of the week started off pretty rocky. I had a little bit of a bender weekend, which I know is like very unlike me and I haven't had one of those in a while. Um, But if you are more new to my brand, I have had some struggles with binge drinking in college and there will be some times where I do drink and I kind of go past my limits. And so after my breakup last month, I really wanted to make sure that I kind of kept myself in check for a little bit just so I didn't put myself in any awkward or uncomfortable 
um, situations where I'm drunk texting or drunk calling or whatever. And so I went to Noisy on Friday and I ended up drinking because I had been going with a friend that I wasn't really that close with. And I was like, you know what, let's just have a drink. I'm not going to know too many people here, whatever. So it's kind of like a social crutch, if you get what I mean. And we kept it in control. I was like, yes, aid, good job. We had a couple of drinks. We kept it in control. We got home safe. Great. And then Saturday, I went to Vibe Vessel, which if you guys don't know what Vibe Vessel is, it is a collective that puts on a lot of music events in Austin, more house and techno. And I hadn't been to one of their events in a while, and I'm a promoter for them. And so I finally was able to go to one of their events again, and it's like going home to family, you know? Everyone was just really excited to see me, and people were buying me drinks and shots, and I just lost track. And it was a little bit hard the next morning. I think I woke up a little bit drunk. And then I went to brunch with a friend and her family. And then that led to Sunday fun day. And so I got home at a decent time. I was in bed at a decent time. But Monday morning, I woke up and I was like, whoa, (laughs) we're not well. So I ended up having to work from home. And I just got really down on myself that Monday, just like, oh my God, you got out of your routine. You had all this stuff to do because you leave town on Friday. It was rough, but by Tuesday, I was feeling a little bit better and I definitely just learned that it's okay to have those weekends. I know I get really hard on myself. One thing I learned in therapy, which I will talk a little bit more about later on the episode, but she really mentioned to me, like, what would you say to your friend? If something like that were to happen, like, would you say that to yourself? And that really put me in check. Like, no, I wouldn't say that to a friend. So I really should just be more kind to myself. So that was something that um, really helped me. And then I was at Social Media Week in Austin, which is a conference. I got to volunteer. I've been doing that the past three years. And it was really awesome just to kind of see where I was two years ago, a year ago, and then now and how much knowledge I've gained since then. Because I do work at a digital marketing agency and then I do vibe with it on the side. So it was really kind of cool kind of seeing the different knowledge that I have and talking with people about my knowledge and my background and stuff. And I ended up getting to go to a influencer happy hour with Walmart. Yes, the Walmart. (laughs) It was Walmart Technologies. Um, But yeah, the big honcho Walmart, I got to go to a happy hour that was sponsored by them and got to connect with other influencers in Austin and in Texas, as well as some of the speakers at the conference and the representative from Walmart. And it was really cool talking with her because she was so fascinated by my brand and everything and what I've created. And she was trying to see how we could tie Walmart in. And I mentioned to her, I do mention Walmart a lot when it comes to camping festivals and doing pre-orders and stuff. And she was amazed by it. So that was a really cool kind of thing for me. And it just really shows kind of how my brand has progressed. And if you didn't listen to last week's episode, I talked about how to become a content creator. And so I was having this weird gratitude moment last night that was just very full circle. And I was just feeling really grateful for how much I've been able to build in the past two years and where it's going and everything. And everyone I talked to last night was just so impressed and was so excited for me and everything. So it was really cool. And I feel like I don't give myself a pat on the back enough. Like I get hyped up by a lot of people, but myself I really don't hype myself up that much so that this was my time to hype myself up (laughs) so that was um pretty awesome and I'm going home to Arizona today and I will be out of town up until crossed so I have Arizona this weekend and then I'll be in cross next weekend so I am really excited about that to go home and then get to hang out with some friends in San Diego. What could I do to make what I'm feeling better or is there a need to? I don't really think there's a need to make anything better. I do feel a little bit stressed with my content um, and making sure I have a good balance between working on stuff and then enjoying being home. So that's something I'm going to be tackling I think this next week, but I don't think there's anything right now um, that I need to make it better. Three things I'm grateful for today. So number one, I'm grateful I get to go home today. I'm really, really excited to go home. I haven't seen my parents since Christmas. And, you know, a lot has happened since Christmas when I saw them. I got into a car accident and I got broken up with. And I'm sure that was really hard for my parents to be in Arizona and not be able to console me. And it was really hard for me not to have them. So I am really excited to see them. And we're going to a wedding, so it's going to be a really happy occasion to be in town. 
The next thing, I'm grateful for my journey. Like I talked about, I was very filled with gratitude last night and I'm still feeling that gratitude today. And then the last thing, I'm grateful for my strength. It's the end of February, you guys. It's been four weeks since my breakup. It's been almost two months since my car accident. And I really did not think I would get to this point. Not that I was like contemplating anything, but I just did not know what this point would look like for me. And I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was just pushing through, kind of going through the motions, feeling like I was on autopilot. And now I feel like I'm finally kind of getting back to some normalcy and getting back to me. And it's very exciting. So I am very grateful for my strength and consistency and being persistent through all the tough times. My affirmation to t- for today. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I did find something on Instagram. It was manifesting affirmations that were really good. And so one that I've been saying is that the universe is working in my favor. So that is one that I've been repeating a lot. And I think that's a really good one just to let you know that no matter what's going on, the universe is always working in your favor. God is always working in your favor, whatever you believe in that kind of thing. How are we feeling after that? I'm feeling good. Sorry, that was a long, long vibe check. But it's been a long time since I got to talk to you guys. It's been like a week. So a lot has happened, which is crazy. And I feel like time is going by so fast and so slow at the same time. But Um, I'm already feeling great after that and I hope you are too. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode and my 10 ways to tidy up your mental space. I'm going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. I haven't talked about this, I think on the podcast, but I did want to take a quick moment to tell you guys what festivals I will be at. So I will be at Crossed in San Diego, which when this episode goes up will be this weekend. So I will be there. I'm so, so excited to be there. It'll be my first Crossed and I can't wait to get some vlogs and content for you guys. And then after that, I will be going to Buku in New Orleans, which is March 20th and 21st. That will be my first Buku. I was accepted as media for Buku, which is so, so exciting for me. And I can't wait to meet the Buku fam. Then after that, I will be going to Coachella weekend two with some of my favorite people ever. I am so, so stoked to be going back to Coachella. Coachella, I went to Coachella 2017 and that's what inspired Vibe With Aid. I went to Coachella and EDC in the same year and that inspired me to create Vibe With Aid. So I'm really excited to go back as a creator and kind of see it from that lens as well as get all that content for you guys. I will be celebrating my birthday on May 9th, but I am using Lightning in a Bottle as my little birthday trip to myself. I have been wanting to go to Lightning in a Bottle for so, so long, so I am really excited. It is in Southern California. It is a four-day camping festival, and it is located in Southern California, so that is one I am very excited. I can't wait. I've heard good things about it, and I feel like if I like forest, I'm going to really like Lightning in a Bottle. Also for Lightning in a Bottle, I will be attending with Ashley Gothier and her squad, which I'm really excited to meet her for the first time. She is literally so amazing and so sweet, and I can't wait to experience Lightning in a Bottle with her for the first time. And then after that, I will be attending Electric Forest, my favorite festival, my home festival. I will be there, and I'm so excited. I will be camping and group camping, and I'll be going with my girlfriend Ryan and Emma Capotis and a big group there, so I'm very excited about that. Then after Electric Forest, I'm taking a little bit of a break. I usually use July and August as a time to just veg out and kind of relax for a little bit. I will be going to Red Rocks at the end of August for Lewis the Child. It'll be my first Red Rocks show. And when Lewis the Child got announced, it just felt right and I bought tickets right away. And then I will be going to my first electric zoo that has been on my list to hit for a while. Emma lives there. So I figured let's send it to electric zoo. So I will definitely be there. I believe it's Labor Day weekend in New York. So I will see you there. It'll be my first East Coast festival. So I'm excited to meet you guys on the East Coast. And then after that is ACL. So I will probably be at ACL weekend one, maybe weekend two, we'll see. It's very easy because I live in Austin and it's the first two weekends of October. And that will be my fourth ACL, which is very crazy to say. 
And then, I know I keep on saying and then, <laughs> after that, I will be planning to go to Escape. So a lot of you guys, my SoCal fam, my Insomniac fam have been wanting me to go to something. So I will be going to my first Escape. And I am planning to go with some other creators, Ashley Gothier, Emma Capotis, Becca Grace. We're all in talks of going together. So get yourselves ready. I'm so, so excited for my first escape. I did Beyond Wonderland 2017 and 2018. So I'm excited to do escape and get to meet all of you guys. And then we will have EDC Orlando as my next event. Um, I've never been to EDCO. It's my top of my list to hit this year. And then finally, Seismic Dance event will be my next festival in November. And then after that, New Year's Eve is up in the air. I know I have my whole year figured out, but we'll see what new, what happens with New Year's, honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, so that is where I will be this festival season. If you guys are going to be at any of those festivals, do let me know. I will have meetups announced once it gets closer to the festival for some of those. So just be on the lookout on social media for that. All right. So 10 ways to tidy up your mental space. So I am just going to go through some of these and talk about some of the ways that I've been able to tidy up my mental space through these different methods and we'll just talk through them. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to always reach out or anything like that. So the first one I'm going to say is be honest with yourself. I think it's really important to be honest with where you are, how you're feeling, whatever it may be. Be really honest with yourself and feel what you're feeling no matter how hard it is. Something I learned in therapy was that I'd rather have two minutes of crying or whatever it may be versus two hours of bottling it up is some way to look at it. So just feel what you're feeling. Accept those feelings. Don't judge those feelings. Don't feel like you should be feeling another way. Like Just accept those feelings for what they are and take note of them. Similar to how we do the vibe check, figure out how you're feeling and see how it's impacting you or what you could do to improve it. I think another flip side to this is when something isn't working for you, that's a great way of being honest with yourself. Like for me, when I realized that binge drinking and blacking out on the weekends is something that I don't want to be doing because I have so much I need to do with vibe with aid on the weekends that I don't have time to be hung over. And so those are some ways to be honest with yourself like, hey, this isn't healthy for you. This isn't working. We need to cl cl get our act together or whatever it may be. And also when you need a break, that is another thing that I've been really trying to be honest with myself about when I'm feeling burnt out what could I take off my plate? Could I take a break? Could I deactivate social media for a little bit? What do I need to do? And then that helps me kind of figure out a plan moving forward. So I think number one, just being honest with yourself and where you are is just really impactful. And you can find ways to do that either through meditation or journaling. And we'll talk about that. Number two, work on your internal voice. I originally had put positive internal voice in here but I also wanted to just be internal voice in general because you can't have positive without the negative you can't have the light without the dark um, there's always going to be some balance and it's kind of figuring out how to get the two to work together I remember in therapy we were talking about um, I I'm said the I guess sentence of I want to calm down my internal voice or I wish I could just shut it off internally the negative internal voice that I have. And she was like, well, you can't really do that because it's still a part of who you are. So you have to figure out a way to either combat it or accept it or try to understand it. Because sometimes the negative voice can be good if it's in, you know, an accountability way that's not super naggy, whatever it may be. Just try and figure out how to cooperate it. And it is something that's gonna take some time. I know I used to be pretty negative and very fearful and anxious probably in college or in high school about getting good grades and stuff like that which it was a positive internal voice when it was pushing me you know to get good grades and stuff but at the same time it was like no you're not doing enough you're not enough whatever it may be and that's not positive that's not a productive way to be talking to yourself So learn how to accept that negative voice and kind of see, okay, what is this negative talk trying to get me to? 
what could I pull from that that I could then utilize or whatever. Um, and don't beat yourself up about it. Just figure out how to get it to work together. And like I said, it's going to take some time. And like for me, I'm still working on it. There are certain things where I feel like I'm not doing enough or something that get triggered. And so I'm trying to figure out ways to combat it with either like a mantra or breathing techniques, whatever you can do before you kind of go down that thought spiral of, you know, that negative self-talk. Number three, get active. And I'm not saying you need to go to the gym five times a week. I'm just saying from time to time, go for a walk, go for a run, maybe pick up yoga, go to a spin class, do something that gets your body feeling good. Even if you just stretch for five minutes every day in the morning or at nighttime, do something that just gets your body feeling good. It's not a matter of looking good or looking a certain way. I'm just saying to be active because there are such positive benefits to being active and having an active lifestyle. You'll tend to have more energy. You'll start to feel good about yourself. Self-confidence will go up. There are certain things that kind of come through that. And also if you do group classes, that's a great way to meet people if you're feeling very lonely or isolated. You can do certain things like class pass. If you guys have class pass in your area, you can pay a flat rate per month and you get credits and then you use those credits to different group fitness classes. So if you want to take a yoga class one week or a spin class the next week, you can totally do that through class pass. Or you can look at classes in your gym and stuff like that. I think if you have a hard time working out by yourself and motivated, find someone to keep you accountable or do those group activity classes. And then once you get in the hang of it and you start working out and being active, like you'll want to do it more because you'll realize how good it feels. Um, And like I said, just work up to it. Aim to go once a week, two times a week. I didn't start going to the gym five times a week until maybe 2016, 2017, but I started working out in like 2012, 2013, I was like working out here and there, but it definitely took some time for me to get into that habit and that routine. And once I realized I I like working out Monday through Friday, it gets my day started, it makes me feel good, then I started going five times a week. So you just have to kind of build up to that and it's totally okay. But yeah, even if you are just feeling stressed, go for a walk, take a breather. I've been taking walks during my lunch. I'll have my lunch and then I'll kind of go walk around just to kind of let my food settle and digest and just to kind of get out of the office because it can be so tiring and my legs get sore if I sit too long. So that's number three, get active. Number four, I'm going to talk about meditation and journaling. So meditation is when you kind of sit in a certain position or you're laying down and you just get into a meditative state. Typically, you'll have people, the classic meditation that people know is when you go, um, you know, that kind of thing that you kind of see in the movies and stuff like that. But meditation can really be anything that you want to make it to be. It's just a moment for you to tune into yourself, tune into your mind, tune into your body, and breathe and kind of see what we're noticing and everything about yourself. There are tons of apps to help you with meditation. Um, I have found a lot of people like Headspace, I think it is. And I don't really use an app. I just do five minutes. I'll tell Google, my Google Home, to set a timer for five minutes and I'll just breathe and focus on breathing. I met someone last night at the happy hour that mentioned when he meditates, he just visualizes what he envisions his day going and hopes to go. He sets intentions, things like that. So some people either just really don't think about anything and then some people do think about things. So kind of figure out what's going to work best for you. There's also um, journaling. So if you really don't feel like sitting for five minutes, you can also journal. I journal in the morning and I will journal whatever I'm feeling that morning, how we're doing, kind of checking in. And then I will do a goal for the day. So that might be, I just really want to be present for the day or I just need to get through work today, whatever it may be. And then I'll do an affirmation. So kind of like the vibe check, I'll pick an affirmation for the day and then I'll do three things that I'm grateful for. So I'm always doing that. I try and journal every morning and then if there's a time where my mind just feels like it's racing at nighttime, I will write at night. It just really depends. Um, But I have found that even meditating for five days and then journaling has just greatly improved my life. 
And that kind of leads me into number six. So practice gratitude. So we're kind of getting in the habit with my vibe checks of practicing gratitude, but find ways where you can practice gratitude daily. It really just helps to recenter you and rebalance you. It doesn't have to be these big type of things like I mentioned where I'm grateful for my strength or I'm grateful for my journey, whatever it may be. It can just be as simple as I'm grateful I got out of bed today or I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head. It was crazy the day I got in my car accident, I was getting gas for myself, I'll never forget. And I just got this wave of gratitude that I could get gas and that I don't have to check my bank account or only put $10 in or anything like that. I just got this extreme gratitude that I had a car and that I could get gas and everything. And then later that day, I got in my car accident, which now looking back, I'm grateful that that happened in a way because I was planning to save up for a new car in 2020. And I ended up getting a car a lot sooner. It was just in a very roundabout way. So it's stuff like that, that you just kind of have to find the gratitude in some bad situations. There's always a reason for everything happening, even though it's not apparent now. Like I've talked about with my relationship with Ryan and him breaking up with me, I understood where he was coming from and I empathize for him. There's no bad blood between us. And now looking back a month later, I am grateful that it happened for both of us because what the reasoning why he broke up with me is pretty serious and it would have been something that would have come up later down the road. And it would have been even worse it had we been together two years, five years, whatever it may be. So I am grateful that it happened now because this is stuff he needs to be working on for his journey. Meanwhile, it brought to life stuff that I need to work on for my journey. I think that... I was very anxious in the relationship because I felt I wasn't worthy of the relationship, which I know you guys are probably like, aid, what the heck? But that's just my own issues that I've had with my own self-worth that didn't come to light until, you know, that anxiety was gone when we broke up. I was like, oh, I feel kind of better. I'm not worrying about this person leaving me anymore. But why was I so worried about him leaving me? And I think it was just my own issues and so I'm now working on that and so in a way I am grateful that we did break up and I'm going through these hardships and stuff because I'm learning so much about myself and I'm finally feel like I'm getting to some unfinished business that wasn't resolved when I met him Um, and he kind of was like a filler for some of that stuff for validation whatever it may be and I am grateful for our relationship I learned so much about myself and I learned so much about you know, what it means to be in a relationship like that with a partner like that. And I'm like, so grateful for all the memories and stuff. And I talked about this in my breakup post that no, I was always going to be grateful for whatever time I did get with Ryan, no matter how long or short, because he really did impact my life. And he's a really amazing person. So things like that, you just kind of have to find the gratitude in those situations, there's always going to be a reason. And I think once you start looking at your life from a place of gratitude, you're going to notice a significant difference in your mental space. Number, what number are we on? (laughs) Number seven. So cleaning up your actual space. So I think it's really, really great when I have a deep clean of my apartment, of my room. It just feels good. And I think sometimes, I think there's like a scientific reasoning behind it. It might have been in like Marie Kondo or something where if if your physical space is actually cluttered, like it's blocking you from some mental stuff as well. Because whenever I clean up, I'm like, okay, I feel good. Like, let's get to the next thing or whatever it may be. I don't know. It just feels like a block for some reason. And so once I clean it up, I'm like, oh, I can like breathe. My clean look, my place looks good. Like, let's get to whatever else there was. So I always try and clean. I know I should be cleaning more, but maybe once a month. (laughs) Um, But I'll like take it in different phases. So like one week I'll clean the bedroom and then another week's the bathroom and then the closet and then the apartment, whatever it may be. And then I'm always donating stuff or throwing stuff out. I am really trying to take a more minimalistic approach, but it's very hard. That is just something that I've always been kind of working on with my closet and with my stuff. Definitely hard and something that is going to take a while, but even just trying to take that approach has helped me keep things tidy and make me really think like, will I use this? Do I need this? Whatever it may be. 
That's why I don't really accept all that many brand collabs anymore for just the free stuff because I'm like, am I really going to use this product? Do I really promote this? Do I really want to promote this product if I don't think I'm going to use it? And so that's also been really helpful in making sure that I'm just not accepting random brand deals just for the free stuff. Hey guys, it's me, Aid. So I messed up and this one's going to be number eight. Pick up a hobby. Pick up something fun. Pick up something crafty or do something um, that you think you would like. I think picking up something else and having something else to do outside of your career, outside of your job can really just help you, I don't know, think about other stuff. <laughs> if that makes sense. Vibe with Aid has become my hobby and it's definitely turned into so much more. So I've been turning to other stuff to be a hobby as a way to just take a break from it. So like I have a coloring book and I think I'm going to try and get into watercolor journaling that my friends do. Um, I am a very crafty person. So if there's any way I can be a little bit more crafty, then I think I'll do that. So I'm thinking about picking up more of a craftier hobby, but you can do something like that, or you can join a book club, or you can join a jogging club, runner's club, whatever it may be. Pick up a little hobby for yourself just to have something else going on and something to look forward to, or something that you can like progressively work on and get better at. I think it's always really great to have something like that. The next one is I am going to say take a break from social media from time to time. I feel like we are so plugged in all the time and it's really exhausting. So I take breaks from social media a lot of the time because it can get really draining. I work in social media. I then do social media for Vibe with Aid. So I'm constantly plugged in. So I take breaks. If there are days where I'm not feeling it, I'll delete my apps for the day. If there are weekends where I just want to disconnect, I will disconnect to connect and everything. So definitely try and see when you can take out some time to take a break from social media. I think it's really healthy and really good for you. And then number nine, surround yourself with positive relationships. This can be very tricky. This can be really hard to navigate, but really see and notice how your energy changes around the people that you surround yourself with. There's that one quote of like your reflection of the five people closest to you or something like that. So make a good choice about who you're surrounding yourself with. I could have but butchered that quote, but you get what I'm saying is that you are a reflection of the people you surround yourself with. And so make sure that the relationships that you have, whether it's friendships or close friends, your relation, your partner relationships, that those relationships are really pumping you up and giving you that energy that you need. If you feel at all that it's draining for you, if you have to pep yourself up just to go hang out with that person, whatever it may be, then that might not be someone that you need to keep in your circle. And that's totally okay. People outgrow each other. People are changing constantly. The people I was closest with in college some of them have stayed and some of them have gone and that's totally okay. That's totally normal. We're all changing and we're all going to have different preferences and ways that we communicate and get along with each other. So really just figure out how to support yourself and surround yourself with the most positive people that are going to bring your energy up and not bring it down. And then the last one is to reach out for help. I know this is a hard one. It's hard because you feel like you're being a burden or if you're feeling alone, or whatever it may be, just find a way to reach out for help. Whether it's asking a friend from time to time to go grab some coffee, or you just need to talk on the phone from time to time. Um, find those people that are really going to be there for you and utilize them as support. I felt like such a burden going through my breakup, but it's really been crazy seeing the people that have really stepped up to check on me and have made me not feel like I'm a burden. Um, I was very nervous when I broke up that I had neglected my friendships with my friends. Even though I wasn't all that codependent on Ryan for friendship, I just had a really bad feeling that after this, I wouldn't really have anyone there for me that were close to me or that lived in Austin. And I was pretty wrong about that. So I do feel really grateful for it. But there's also another piece to this where I was scared to reach out, but a lot of them are reaching out. So make sure that you are checking up on your friends as well and um, check it, 
check in on them from time to time. There's people that I don't talk to for a couple of months, but I'll reach out to every now and then just to make sure they're doing good and whatnot. So just do what you can. And then there are other resources that you can utilize. There are such things as support groups that you can just do a quick Google search. If you are having issues with something specific, you could always just Google search like, um, for example, domestic violence support group or mental health support group. And then the other thing is going to therapy. So I know that this option cannot be available to a lot of people due to financial reasons. There are more affordable options as, you know, mental health and anxiety and depression are on the rise in the United States. There are ways to kind of figure it out or at least talk to someone. And so I definitely have been seeing the benefit to going to therapy and I feel very grateful that I can afford to go to therapy because she has honestly just helped me so much this past month and I feel so grateful that I took this step to do that because I never really had any crazy anxiety or depression or anything like that growing up. I've been very blessed that I never really had issues like that. I've had situational anxiety and social anxiety, but not enough to really go see anyone for it until the accident and the breakup happened. So it's been really great just to have someone to talk to that's completely unbiased, that doesn't know anything about me until I tell them about me, and can really validate and provide exercises or provide, you know, an explanation to why we feel the way we feel and stuff like that. So if you are able to reach out to a therapist or find a therapist, I highly recommend it. I know there are other um, services where you can see a therapist online or you can talk to them on the phone. So you can figure out ways to hopefully reach out to someone if you truly do need it. I feel good about that. (laughs) I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know how you guys liked it. Let me know what tips, what other mental health tips you guys do. What's your favorite rituals or practices that you guys do to take care of yourself. I really, really wanted to do this because with festival season and with just life honestly going on, I really want to look after you guys and make sure that you're going to be okay. Um, I know, especially with festivals and if you partake in certain substances, which is totally fine, you do you, whatever that may be, but that does affect your mental space. I will say that it does affect your mental space. If you do partake in that stuff, just make sure that you are taking care of yourself afterwards. You are doing what you need to do. I know Emma Capotis has a really good podcast episode on her podcast Rave Culture Cast about drug safety and stuff like that and how to work with the come down. So hopefully you guys can check out that episode and then utilize some of the tips that I provided today to also help you guys out as well. So that is it for today's episode. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And it benefited you in some way, as long as you're trying to make progress and work work on it, then that's a positive step in the right direction. Like I said, my inbox is always open if you need help. I hope that with festival season coming up, we can all look out for each other and check in on one another. Let me know how you guys liked today's episode by tagging me on Instagram where you're listening. You can also send any feedback, ideas, or questions to Let's Buy Podcast at Buy with Ajax. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye, B-Vibe Tribe. Bye.